Uh, hi guys and girls, uh, welcome and I'm so happy that we have this opportunity to talk and practice English, both me and you guys, because there is always room for improvement. So my name is Jovana, I'm 30 years old, I turned 30 in January and I help women business owners market and sell their products. Okay, wonderful. That is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what we call an elevator pitch and a perfect one, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, great job, Yavana. Thank you. Um, well, let's hear a little bit about you. As I said, we met at your workshop last year, Turn Your Profit Into Passion, and it was definitely a turnaround for me. It was something that actually helped me build the business that I have today. Um, and over 1,000 women have been through this workshop and your consultations and uh, over 1,500 uh, 1, online. So tell me, what is the main difference between those women and men who have made a successful business and those who haven't? Well, the global statistic says that only 1% of people that buy online course make a result. With me, it's 2 to 3%, so I think it's really good. Um, I've noticed a few differences between those who made results that they desired and those that sadly did not. Not because they were... Mm, there was not like one reason to say no they were like less capable no that's not the truth we are all equally capable because we all have some talents and superpowers and we all have some places where we have to improve in knowledge and also in our attitude so women who have created the desired results in my course both when i did offline workshops and online course they worked really hard and i think there is no really a substitute for hard work uh, the thing with these women like yourself were that you guys you did not let yourself slip into procrastination or overwhelm for too long yeah you go into that place just like myself but very fast you understand and you're there you see that you are doing shit shitty job and you see oh my god why am i feeling shitty oh because i'm procrastinating i'm eating i'm doing nothing like you know i'm eating third piece of chocolate i'm not even hungry so self-awareness is a major point that differentiates these two groups also the women that made results are the ones that failed and continued to work hard they did not complain uh, to me or to themselves probably about the amount of work that needs to be done they did not think that i or anyone else achieved an overnight success they knew that there were like at least 10 years of hard work before you have a business like me today and they also set a clear intention before they enrolled my course and they made a decision. So they promised to themselves that they were going to do this. And with that mindset, they did not look for excuses and they never stopped until they got what they wanted to get in the beginning. On the other hand, the women who failed once and stopped trying were the ones that I say that they just decided to quit because I don't believe in world like failure. I fail daily, but these women just did not decide to continue because they did not believe that uh, they are worthy of the goal that they set up. And the problem here, there are many, there is a whole webinar I did on this topic, but the ones that failed, they actually constantly looked for excuses and they looked into their past as evidence why they won't be successful in the future, why they won't have a successful online business in the future, just because they didn't have it in the past. They also spent a lot of their time looking at what others are doing and talking about instead of minding their own business. And uh, a lot of my friends and colleagues ask me how am I so focused because I don't read other people's blogs I don't follow almost anyone on Instagram because I'm very focused on my work I don't want to contaminate my thoughts uh, if I read something I read really old books and I don't really read new age stuff because I feel that the message is diluted everything that has to be that was said in stoicism it's still relevant today another thing that was typical for women who failed they had uh, feelings of self-pity a lot. They also had victim mentality. 
and they were always looking for somebody who is uh, like making them, you know, feel like less than, and they were focusing on the external validation instead of just uh, being there for themselves and knowing in their heart that they are worthy of this goal and of this pursuit. And another uh, issue when we talk about marketing, especially is the women who failed are the ones that created eBooks, online courses, products and services before they had a community and before they had clients that they could they could ask them you know what do you guys want so they cared too much about what other people think and what they thought was popular and they were looking for support and for like feedback in the wrong places like friends and family not in their community because they did not have content they didn't commit themselves to 100 days of daily content to build a community from scratch instead they were looking to friends and family uh, who of course always give us fear-based advice because logically they want us to be safe not like go into the entrepreneurship and go really crazy um, and also sometimes uh, we forget that uh, common sense is not business sense so when we ask for friends for advice that don't have a business like we want to have they will also give us maybe common sense advice which is not really relevant and applicable to our specific situation and also i want to talk about uh, briefly some skills that we need if we want to be good in entrepreneurship some of these skills we are born with some of them we built and it's never too late to build the skill if you know that you are worthy of the pursuit if the goal is very important to you and if you know your why and these skills which i consider crucial for entrepreneurship and building your own business first of all is money time management and also mind management, which is why I always say you need to see a psychologist, you need to see a coach, you need to see somebody who can help you manage your mind until you're really good at it so you can manage it yourself. Another issue, especially for women, is setting and maintaining clear emotional boundaries. Women have very, like, it, they find it very troublesome to say no. And in business, 99% if for me, daily is saying no, no to interviews, no to offers, no to collaborations, because I know very well what is my yes. And my yes, I'm very focused. So all which is not going towards that yes is like, bye-bye, see you later. And that is something very hard because a lot of women are people pleasers and they want everyone to be happy. And, and that is not something that will help you have a successful business. If you want to have a successful business, you will have to disappoint many people and you're not there to live up to their expectations. You are there to live up to your expectations of yourself. So just forget about everyone else, everything else, and you just have to have a very, very sharp and clear focus. And whenever you uh, are self-aware and you practice this daily through journaling and meditation and weekly work with your coach or psychologist, you will not uh, make the same mistakes that they are making, like slipping into the thought loops, negative thinking, obsessing over the unimportant stuff, procrastinating. Uh, that is the difference. Mind management, time management, and money management is something that you cannot build a successful business without and if you don't have these skills now it is okay because there is so much good content great books and great help that you can find and to sum up because i, I mean I've, I've been talking for like a long time that's fine <laughs> <laughs> i'm very passionate about this it's <laughs> so obvious, yeah. uh, the main difference uh, between the ones that succeeded and the ones that didn't is that the ones who did were committed like you you do something you get the result you decide whether this result is good or bad or you just progress and you ask all the time for my feedback and you do better and you do more and you work harder and you work smarter so the difference is that you're committed and the ones who failed were just interested Yes, I think that is, uh, it was hard for me at first as well. And before I came to your workshop, I was so confused. At, actually, I was on the verge of, you know, quitting and deciding this isn't for me. I'm not ready for this. I cannot build a business. But I think for me, the guidance and um, the fact that you really, uh, you give so much of yourself to the clients who, who want to do something uh, is so important that I can 
emailly daily. <laughs> and it's which really you do. True, <laughs> which I do. <laughs> and you always respond, which is wonderful. You know, having someone, uh, when I have a business idea, and I don't know if it's a good one because I don't have that much experience with business as much as I have with English, that I can ask someone and that is wonderful. And that is why I appreciate the support that I got uh, from and, and everything that I got from you, but especially the support after uh, the, the product. Yeah, after the course. Yeah. Finished. Yes, exactly. Okay, so um, you decided that right now, at least, your uh, mission is to help women market and sell their products better. So why this? How did you decide that this is what you want to tackle? So in 2016, my blog was becoming very big. I was blogging since uh, 2011. And in 2016, I started addressing topics such as freelancing, how to start working remotely, what are the options for someone who speaks a foreign language and lives in Serbia. And I got uh, a lot of like scholarships, stipends. Uh, I was Coca-Cola Adria blogger and things like that, which were basically helping me and paying me to write blog posts monthly. And this was very useful for me because I got to know my audience better. I had a lot of audience back then, but I did not know them quite well as today, which is normal. You like learn through time. And what I saw is that women were mostly interested in learning how to make money and they were feeling a lot of shame when they say, yeah, I want to be a successful woman, you know, who has her own business because in all the movies, you only see successful women as bitches and you only see like if they have a business, it's some shitty, you know, flower shop or some shabby bakery. And I'm like, okay, why can't I just have a multi-million dollar business if I want to do that? If somebody wants to have a little bakery, that's beautiful. I will buy from them. But why do we have to judge? Big idea, small idea, a lot of money, less money uh, to determine whether a woman is a bitch or not a bitch. And so I was noticing that women want that, but they are just afraid and they feel shamed if they declare, if they stand in their power. I don't care really what people that are not relevant to me think about me. So that was a huge opportunity because I could just say what I mean and what I think and what I think is useful. And women, they loved it. It resonated with them so much. So they asked me, how can we work with you more? In my first workshop, 25 women came to Belgrade. I was so shocked because for the first six months, I didn't spend a dollar on an ad. I was just doing it organically. I would write a blog post, 25 women come, they pay money, you know, everything was working amazingly well. So why that? Why that niche? Because as I said, I'm very passionate about business since I was a child. I always knew I was going to be a multimillionaire in Serbian money that is checked in dollars, not yet, but will be. And I wanted to make a difference and money helps you scale your mission. So I only, why do I sell this now? Because basically I sell what I know brings results and I can only lead people where I have gone myself. And this is really my zone of genius. And you and women like you who worked with me can tell the audience the same thing. And that is why I have customers even now, this month, I sold over 30 courses and 10 eBooks and we are like in quarantine state, you know, and I'm not doing any ads just to mention. So I think this is very important. Once you know what you are good at and what people tell you that they need, not what I want them to need, what I would like them to need, but what they explicitly say, Jovan, I need more help with this. And how do I know that? Because since 2011 until 2016, I've written over 100 posts that were addressing a lot of topics. And I was following the statistics. I was noticing patterns. And then I made conclusions based on the data, not on what my heart you know, would like to believe. Yes. So that is my answer to that wow. question. <laughs> wow, it is really uh, amazing. I could listen to you forever. <laughs> it is really amazing uh, how much passion you have for this. And it shows in your business as well. And that's why people come to you now um, because maybe they have been putting it off. Maybe now we are going, uh, as they say, if you can't go outside, go inside. And people are realizing mm. this is something that... They going want. inside is always the best option because... Yes. No one, you know, no one can help you but yourself. You can listen to a lot of content, but if you don't find your why in your heart and 
you know, your purpose in your heart and you do that by action, not by thinking, no one can do it for you. Yes, that is, that is very, very, very true. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, this is your area of expertise. I'm sure you've seen so many business ideas, uh, but I'm also sure that not all of them were good in your opinion and that you, uh, well, actually what I want to ask you is, can you tell a good business idea from a bad business idea and how do you do that? Well, I can only have my opinion, which is relevant probably to me and that's it. But, <laughs> you know, I have an opinion based on data. As you said, I worked with over 1,000 women and daily for two hours, I answer two emails. So sometimes it's 100 emails, sometimes it's 20 emails, but I have a lot of data, a lot of ideas, and I see which ones are manifested into reality and which ones, uh, you know, create something and which ones are just uh, ideas and fluffs. Um, there are a lot of signs that the person is not able to execute the idea, even if the idea is good, the person might not be suitable to deliver on that mission. Uh, there is a great book, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, which is something I highly recommend. And another one is Michael Gerber, The E-Myth. So you can see if you read those two books, whether you are the person to execute on that idea, or maybe that idea is not for you and maybe it's not for anyone. But let me give you an example because you know me and I'm very practical. So if a person comes to me or sends me an email and they have zero work experience in the field that they want to tackle or a problem they want to address, and they only come to me with a bunch of ideas without doing any research, that is a red flag. Uh, the problem is with majority of people, they think their idea is valuable and it's basically zero like value because execution is everything and since they don't have a record of executing before the idea is useless and another problem is majority of people are not willing to do the work for free until they are good enough uh, to sell and another problem is that people think that it will happen very fast and it never does. So as I said, from 2011 until 2016, I wrote over 100 blog posts completely for free without any monetization strategy because it was something that came from my heart. I wanted to share those things that I learned along the way. And if you come with an idea and you don't want to do the work, and you, by doing the work, you get better, not by thinking, not by, I don't know what. So uh, another red flag to me is when somebody has created a product and they don't have an audience, they don't have a community, and they obviously, they don't know whom to sell their ebook or course. And that's they, when they come to me and they say, I'm not selling, I have a website and I have a product. And I say, yeah, amazing. But where is the content part? You know, where is the community? Who do you think that is going to trust you? You are not an expert in the field. You have not validated your idea by talking to your community, by doing service like type form, like Instagram stories, anything, you know. And another issue I, f I have these days, uh, I do daily consultations with women who already have a successful business, but they are not selling enough in their own opinion. And the trouble with this, these are uh, really successful women and on their websites, which are beautiful, they sell like five things. And I ask them, okay, wait, what is your one signature service with one core offer to one target client, you know, that solves one problem? and you get one result and they, confu they get totally confused. And they think and they have this belief that you need to offer five things or 10 things to live from it, which is complete misconception. Basically, I think it's the opposite. The less you have to offer, the clearer your messaging would be. So this is something which is like very hard for people to comprehend. For me, it comes very naturally because you, I don't know, I'm very passionate about focused work and just focused products. And once, um, you know how I do that in my business, uh, when I was doing offline workshops, I started in November, 2016. And I said to myself, Jovana, you will do 1000 of these. You will meet every woman with every problem age 18 to 67. And I did. And when it was 1,000 women, I said, now we're going to do an online course because now we have a God great data, like God, thank you, you know, because I could solve a lot of problems that I could not be able to solve unless I did 1,000 in person. 
And this is what people want to skip. They want to go to the result I have now without the process. But I fucking love that process. That's why I made it to the result. If I was hating it along the way, I would never be where I'm today. This even rhymes. But really, I, <laughs> I really, really believe in that. Because if you don't enjoy it, maybe you're in the wrong business. Yes. I really enjoyed my business, even when it was shitty, you know, when it was not doing so well, when I was not making enough money, because I knew it was always the problem was always me, not the market, not someone else. It was always my messaging, my landing page, my Facebook ad copy, my photo. So you need to dig. You need to be passionate about digging the holes. because with every hole that pops up and you dig it and you find the gem inside, you're closer to the, your ideal funnel. And then after 1000 online courses gets sold, you know, I will do the next thing. So maybe for you, it's not 1000. Maybe for you is $100,000 you make with one product and you go to the next one. It's not my call to tell you what to do. I can just tell you from my experience, how focus to me was a game changer. Yes, I think that is uh, really important. And it, it has been my problem for a long time that I wanted to do so many things. Even now, I think that maybe I'm offering too many things, uh, but it's narrowing down and it's becoming mm -hmm. much clearer as people approach me, as they ask me what it is. Uh, they tell me actually what it is that they want to learn from me. They message me. They answer my stickers on Instagram, whatever it is. Now I do have this community that I did not have when I met you. And I wouldn't have it now if I didn't meet you. I'm sure of that because I didn't have any idea how this is supposed to work. I just thought, you know, if I post a picture with my offer on Instagram, somebody's going to buy it. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way, unfortunately for many people. But I do think that the process is so important and I love it as well. Now that I know what I'm supposed to do, that, that was the key for me. I had all of these uh, this pieces of information because um, I have been doing copywriting. I did it even, even a little bit of marketing. I'm a journalist by profession. So I did know bits and pieces of the process. But when I came to the workshop, you gave me the, the, the map. <laughs> you just had the pieces of a puzzle. And then, yes, you know, I made exactly. it make sense because there's a shit ton of information online. And I'm not selling you those in, that information. I'm just telling you my roadmap. Exactly. And if you you know if you don't want to do it just don't do it it's like i don't really you know i can't really do it for you yes exactly but the map for those who want to use it is precious is map is for dummies come on like it's really simple <laughs> the only question is like do you want to do the work or you don't want to do yes the work? that is also true that is i, I absolutely i can't disagree with that okay so you mentioned so much that uh, you did so much for free and i actually have to say that i enjoy doing things for free right now especially right now but we will go over to that a bit later but tell me what do you think generally about giving knowledge away from for free I believe you're safe. I always did. No one can steal my ideas because no one can execute them. If they can, they, then they should because then they might do it better than me. Um, basically, since I started, I've been doing like 80 or 90% things for free. And I build my business on that because I always knew that even if I gave it all for free, it would do still nothing for a majority of people because they don't want to do the work and um, then after years in this business I came to a realization that actually only people who paid paid attention and did the work so I would never do or give my workshop for free because if you pay 220 euros or whatever price I put it in the future because every year I increase my prices in June then definitely if you pay that money, you will do the work. And I got a message uh, today actually from one client and she said, you know, when she bought my work online course two days ago and she said, you know, when I bought your course, um, I did not have the money and I had to take the money from the bank, from my savings to invest in your course. And I just had a feeling that it's worth it. And I said to her, you will succeed with or without my course because you did not believe my course was worth it. You believe you are worth it, that you are worth of investing two and 20 in yourself because you know yourself, you love yourself and you will do the damn work. 
And that is something that you will, she would succeed with or without my, my course. You know, she would just get there faster. But that's the difference. People who want to find something for free, who search to steal somebody's work or something, they will never succeed because in their heart, they believe they are not good enough. They are not worth it. If you are not worth it, then you get that kind of a result in your life. Are you worth investing 3000 You know how many people laugh at me when I say I invest $3,000 a month in one mentorship program? They think I'm an idiot. But when I invest 3000 I know that in a year I can charge that much because I supported people who charged me that much and I created results that made my return on investment pay off. Yes. So that's the philosophy, you know? I absolutely agree. And uh, I remember uh, on your workshop, you said, um, you know, if somebody steals my idea, uh, that's fine because my idea gets across to more people and that's also fine. And I remembered that even later when I was thinking, should I share this for free? It's so valuable. It's so important. And I always thought, okay, even if somebody steals it and gives it to someone who can use it, that's great. Somebody else is going to learn it and it's going to get back to me somehow. And I really think... I really think that was a really valuable piece of information for me at that point. Okay, let's take a look at the moment we are in right now. And this is the global uh, crisis we have with the coronavirus. Um, and I know that many of my friends and people that I uh, know are struggling because they don't know if they should sell things right now, or how they should behave, what they should do. So what do you think about selling your product or your service during the times of crisis? Well, this is not my first crisis. Um, I had a lot of crises, like both like I've been in business for a long time. And even before my business, uh, I had been participating in my father's business. So this is definitely not my first crisis. One of them was the economical crisis, which we all faced. Another one was when I had my tumor surgery and I couldn't work for six months. Another one so there was like a lot of, you know, crisis that I won't go, go into because nobody really cares about my medical issues. But the problem was that during one of those crises for six months, I could not work. So I was in deep shit because I was not prepared. So let's be honest, I was just plain stupid. I did not have savings enough to sustain me for six months like I do now if I was to, again, uh, get into some trouble and can't work because of health or whatever, any other reason, you know? So... Back then, I really paid the price of my stupidity and lack of uh, information of thinking about it because I was very young and I thought I can always make money. I can always earn money. I'm not, uh, I don't have shame. I could work any job, you know. Um, but when the health hits you in the head, you know, then you can't really go and, you know, get just any job because you're just in your bed. So I have a few tips depending on where you now, maybe if you're just starting a business and then I can say if you're a large business now and if you are a small business. So let's start about uh, the option that if you're just starting your business today, for example, should you sell? I don't think you should sell. If you're starting today, I think you should use this time to build your audience, to create a community, to interact with them, to offer free value, whether it's blog posts, whether it's YouTube videos or free classes uh, via Zoom, if you're a yoga instructor or a French teacher or what Oli is doing now, these free uh, interviews and webinars. Uh, if you are, uh, for example, a restaurant or a small food business, you can also offer right now contactless payments, free delivery, and maybe bonus money to some of your employees that decided to work for you even in these crazy times. On the other hand, if you are just starting a fashion business, maybe you can see if you can help by producing some masks and offering them to people who need them. If you are now starting your nail art business or you work in a salon, you could maybe offer some free tutorials on YouTube on how ladies can do their nails at home because the majority of my friends actually go to nail salons, especially in Serbia. So if you are a language teacher and you just lost your job or you just want to start your online business, just start with offering free value and content, install Zoom, offer workly, weekly uh, workshops like Olivera, and just change topics every week to make it fun for people who come. Maybe on those workshops, you could offer some discounted or free classes 
Or on the other hand, if you don't want to uh, teach a language and you're, you're not qualified for that, you, maybe you could work as a virtual assistant and offer uh, something that you know how to do well um, whatever it is, uh, maybe it's a design, maybe it's uh, something related to data entry, or maybe you could get a job in a call center or find a job on, I don't know, Upwork or freelancer. So if you're starting a business, start building your portfolio, your connections and your community. And also, if you're looking for a job now, check out Upwork, freelancer, iTutor, LinkedIn, Muse Jobs, etc. If you are on the other hand, a large brand, then right now I would not be focused on selling, but instead of offering something for free, but to somebody that is really in need right now. So I'll give you an example. Uh, I was reading my magazine, uh, one of my favorite magazines. Uh, it's a street magazine, street vendors sell it. It's called Lice Ulice in Serbia. And McDonald's offered free meals to street vendors of that magazine because now they're not able to sell and to pay for their food and apartments at the moment because we are under quarantine, we are at home. And then I'll give you another option if you are a small business owner, which is very important because maybe you cannot now afford to stop working because then you would not be able to feed your family and the other people like your employees that depend on you because they need you to continue selling. If your product or service stops, then maybe they also will be in big trouble. I'm not saying you should sell something which is now not relevant, but if you're selling a product and a service that can help people in this time, you should not stop selling. If you're selling a small food business, continue if you can. If you're selling a weight loss program, continue because now everyone is staying at home and overeating and people don't, they shouldn't do that. They should be able to somehow like stay healthy and continue their exercise routine and stay on whatever food plan they were before this. They should stick to some routines because we're all going to lose our mind if we just start going insane and eating our emotions instead of feeling them. I know it's like very tempting to eat your emotions. <laughs> I've been there, yeah. but I know from experience it does not help. So if you're selling something like that, it is very important you don't stop now. Um, honestly, no matter, you know how much I love selling, but I'm not telling everyone should do selling right now. If you are not selling something that, that is relevant right now, now, just stop and focus on the content. I mean, to conclude, I can talk about this for long because um, it's something I'm very passionate about. Uh, selling, don't sell it or don't sell it, it's your call. But the point here that I'm trying to make is that uh, people who are shaming the people who are now selling are usually not the ones that are doing selling for a living. And they usually work for somebody who is selling for them and who is selling for a living. So it's very easy to shame somebody if you're not doing the work, we know that, you know? So I think I understand their perspective and where they're coming from, but they probably think sales is horrible, money is horrible, but I'm just saying that they would not have a job and they would not have money on their table to feed their family right now if their boss was not doing the selling. So if you're not selling, that means you work for somebody who is doing the selling for you. So stop with the shaming, whatever you do in life, just never shame anyone because you never know what is somebody's story. And crisis or no crisis, if you have a small business and if you have a product or service and you have a client that needs that product or service and wants to pay for it, that can never be a bad thing. So that is my message. If you are one of those who are now able to sell and you are successfully selling and feeding more mouths and feeding the economy, then continue doing that. Because if everyone stopped buying now, the economy would collapse. Yes, thank you so much for that. Uh, I think many people here needed to hear that, me first. And I think it is so important. Uh, it's something that I also heard in your live with Carolina and in some other um, lives that, you know, people just need to continue doing and selling. Otherwise, we're all going to be in a very big problem. Um, okay, so we are all small. Well, most of us here, I presume, are small businesses or entrepreneurs and I know from my own experience is not a very it's it's not always a nice road it can be very tough so what do you do what selling uh, entrepreneurship in general um, in general uh -huh. uh, yes so uh, in the difficult moments what do you do to stay focused and to move forward to make progress what is your 
secret to staying focused, even if it's hard? I think it's hard for me majority of the days. It's never easy, honestly. Like from seven days, maybe four days, it's hard. It's just less, the same as like going to the gym. Uh, I go to the gym every day in the morning, every, every day, same time. And majority of the days, I don't feel like going. But when I go, I feel amazing. I never went and felt shitty afterwards. So it's the same with business. Whenever I feel bad, I just remind myself that I chose this. And this makes me feel uh, empowered and not victimy and self-pitying. So I just remind myself that nobody made me do that job. I created this job and I really never would trade this job for anything else in the world because this is my dream job and I created it. I've been creating it for the last 10 years. So I think that if you find something that you are so passionate about as I am about this, you will never stop because you will just become unstoppable. Uh, the, the desire is so much stronger than anything that can go against you. And it is my belief that this is the best job in the world. And the reason being is that it requires me to constantly grow, evolve, expand, invest money, time, and energy in myself, in my mind management, money management, time management. And honestly, 10 years in this job that I, I really believe in this moment in time that I personally am I'm my like best and safest investment because I never found anything else where I can put money that brings so much more money than investing in myself. And that is why I feel that this is the best job on the planet. So whatever that job is for you, maybe you're a barista, maybe you're something else. Just remind yourself that you made a decision to do that job. And it's very important for your business or your career to support your life values. And my business support my values. My values are freedom, sharing knowledge and contributing to my community. And this is not just how I do my business. This is how I live my life. So uh, this is very important to say because people say, yeah, easy for you to say when you have money, you know, and time. But no, when I was broke, when I was young, when I was in trouble and starting from scratch, I did the same things. I could not donate money like now, but I could donate my time, which I did through my blog and through like series of uh, CVs, motivation letters, uh, application for university that I've written for my friends for free. I was doing, I was leaving my values when I was broke and starting out. So if you don't know what are your values, journal about it. Because if you don't integrate those into your business, obviously your business is not going to feed you with that much desire as my business feeds me because it will be run on somebody else's values, not your own. So you're probably then in the wrong business if you need so much support, uh, you know, staying in that business. And another thing that gets me going every day is that I believe that if something is difficult, it means the reward is better and fewer people are going to bust their ass to do it. So I always love doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing. And uh, if now everyone is watching Netflix, I'm going to watch, you know, something else. This is since I was a kid. I just <laughs> felt like if everyone is doing it, it must be wrong. That was my logic. And also uh, safety was never something that motivated me in life. Never. I love taking risks. I love thinking on my feet, being fast, making fast decisions, making results, producing results, even when they're shit, even when I make mistakes and everyone laughs at me, I know I'm still ahead of them because I'm gaining data and knowledge and they're just busy laughing at me and doing shit, you know? So also another thing I believe is with that much movement and data, mistakes are necessary. Failure is not optional. It's daily thing we do. And we pivot when necessary. If you see you don't like the business you're in anymore, you can change it. But as long as it's based on your values, you will never need external motivation to do anything. Yes. Yes. I think uh, motivation for me, for example, when when working with my students, I love it when I see that they are motivated from the inside. So not uh, somebody told me that I have to learn English or somebody told me that I should um, have a business or my mom thinks I would be a great cook. So I went to a cooking school or whatever it is, but knowing and feeling inside that this is what you really want to do uh, is what makes results, whether it's learning English or making your own business. So I, I think that uh, finding that something is maybe the, maybe the biggest 
the, the toughest thing. But when you do, and when you have support like I do, <laughs> everything else uh, comes as much easier. And well, you can, you can go through the tough times knowing that it is who you are, basically. Not just what you want to do, but it's who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so you've mentioned that you failed many times uh, in life, and I think we all have. I do it daily, yeah. I think it's good. I think we learn from failure, and I don't always tell my students the best way to learn is from your own mistakes. Um, but I would like to hear about your favorite failure and what have you learned from it. Uh, there are many. Maybe, I don't know, if we talk about business failure, trusting the wrong people, uh, getting lied on, cheated on, uh, people stealing money from me. Um, those are some of the things that um, I was um, faced with, but that's normal. That's everyone who has their business has been cheated on or stolen money from, basically. Uh, but uh, one thing that uh, when you say failure in my mind, my mind goes to first, not to those, but actually to this one, is that situation that made a big difference in my life and taught me that I need to have money six months in advance. I need to start saving. I need to learn to manage my finances better. And that is a situation when I had one very painful surgery, uh, which lasted 35 minutes without anesthetics because I could not afford them. And this doctor that was doing this surgery, he said, uh, nobody ever did this surgery without anesthetics, maybe like 100 years ago, you know. Wow. So I don't know if you can, you will just maybe faint because the pain is so high. And I was so scared, but I was already in pain for days. I'm, I'm not going to talk about what was the surgery. It's really not relevant and it's very horrible to listen about. But the point is that I was already in pain for months because of that. And he said, this is going to last approximately 30 minutes. And I can't even put local anesthetics because this is the whole wound is like it, everything is fucked up. So you'll just have to like scream through it the whole time. And I will chain your, your hands so you can't move a lot. And I said, okay, yes. And in that situation, I said that because I had the opportunity to call a friend or somebody, of course, like we all do to ask for money. But I said to myself, Fiona, this is the price that you're going to now pay because you are not responsible towards yourself and your business and your health. And you're going to scream here like an animal for 30 minutes to learn this lesson. And I know these people are listening to this and they're saying, Fiona, you're such an idiot. But I know, I, I feel you, I understand why you think that. But this was my choice. And I was really fully ready to do it and to suck it up because that was, I knew that that is how I learned. If you learn by asking somebody to fix your shit, you do that. But it doesn't help me in life. When I fuck something up, I want to clean my own shit. And so I was there on that bed lying and screaming 35 minutes from my tummy. I'm not even kidding you. And you knew, you know, Oliveira, that I lost my voice due to laryngitis twice last year and due to severe allergies. But this time I was screaming 35 minutes and my throat was not even like, I didn't even have like a sore throat. That is a, such a power that we are capable of in our body. And these are some of the monstrous situations that I've been in my life that taught me how tough I am and how much pain, like physical, mental pain I can go through. So I know this sounds very masochistic and probably like some people are like now living this life, but those are the less. <laughs> that I've learned in my life that have helped me and that particular surgery now enabled me to have this really chilled place in my brain and on my bank account because I learned my lesson that way so wow. that's my favorite one of my favorite failures wow it's uh I, I actually nobody left <laughs> just so you know <laughs> <laughs> we have that morning people love this yeah <laughs> Uh, but it is, uh, I actually was on the verge of uh, actually crying a little bit when you were saying this. Oh, no, don't. It, no, was, no, no. it was really. <laughs> I understand. I am uh, very empathetic. So when I hear that somebody else is in pain, actually, uh, some time ago, I was witnessing a situation where somebody else was in a huge pain and I almost fainted because I felt it so much. So. <laughs> it's good. I didn't tell you what was the surgery about. Yeah. Okay. So. Don't tell me. <laughs> But uh, I think it's, um, it shows how much you know yourself, how much you are aware yeah. of what helps you, what teaches you, what makes the best results. And 
if you are willing to go through that much pain and you are here now, obviously you did something right. So great. <laughs> <laughs> I would not recommend this to anyone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I agree with that. <laughs> Unless you have the desire in your brain and your heart to go through it because you know that is how you learn. No, I, I know. Thank you. <laughs> I'll <try> something <laughs> <Good>. else. <laughs> Glad for you. <laughs> um, okay. So Coming to the end of this uh, webinar, I want to ask you, uh, as you are known among your followers and people who have worked with you as a promoter and believer in constant education and working on yourself and improving yourself, tell me which course or membership, mentorship or a book or education uh, do you think has most influenced your entrepreneurial path? Well, I've been like learning about psychology since I was in elementary school. And the thing is, I was so passionate about it that I wanted to enroll psychology. You know, I, I, not many people <laughs> know this. Yeah. But then my dad told me, you know, you have to learn a lot and it's not really, I don't think it's thing for you. It's not related to business. Do you really like business? You like sales. You are very, into that so he didn't think that that's good for me and I think he was right but the point being psychology is the tool and psychotherapy that has made me unstoppable in my own opinion which is the only opinion that is valid in my life so yes. yeah so the best spent money and I've spent I think probably fifty thousand dollar on like work on myself my brain by that I mean Although I pay my trainer whom I love, but my brain is my main tool. And uh, the best investment, I'll give you four options. If you have money and if you're broke and all of those in between. So if you have like me, if you want to invest $3,000 a month in yourself, then invest in Brooke Castillo coaching certification, which lasts six months. And you will learn basically everything you need to know about managing your mind and your business so you can get the results you want in your life. And this is like, money back basically guarantee i mean they don't refund they never did because this woman makes 27 million dollars a year she knows what she's doing trust me yeah. if you don't want to invest three thousand per month in your mental uh, situation you can maybe invest and afford 300 and then in that case i would highly recommend again bru castillo but this time self-coaching scholars membership program which lasts 12 months and has 12 different topics and you will learn how to manage your time money energy uh, how to set and protect your boundaries and how to start a business in your right mind because i believe that women who did not uh, continue to uh, proceed after their failure the failure was in their mind, not in their business. And if you have only $30 to invest in yourself, then you can invest in these two books, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber and Men's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. If you have no money to invest in yourself, then you can invest your time. And I suggest investing your time in listening to every episode of the Life life coach school podcast by Brooke Castillo and writing down what you've learned and implement along the way. And in one year, if you listen to all of these episodes, there are over 300 and you don't end up in a better place mentally, financially, and in every basically way, shape or form, just send me an email. And I don't know, like I'll help you out personally because it's impossible. Wow. Okay. I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'll start with the podcast and see how it goes. But I think uh, you sent me, actually, I remember some of her podcasts and I was blown yeah. away. I was literally like, it opened up some spaces in my mind that I didn't even know existed. It was, it yeah. was really amazing. She, and she has such a calming voice. It, <laughs> I think it is also so important. She, she really sounds like she knows what she's talking about. So she does. My recommendation for the podcast, definitely. And hopefully at some point I can invest in the other uh, things that you have mentioned. Okay. Tell us um, uh, for the end of our uh, today's interview, uh, how can we work with you right now? For free, you uh, should definitely read my blog. There are, as I said, almost 100 amazing posts that can help you from business to time management. Uh, and if you want to listen to YouTube, uh, there are two amazing business lectures that I've actually done on live seminars for 200 women in Belgrade. I have posted them in Serbian on my YouTube channel. So feel free to listen to those two audios. 
Uh, on the other hand, if you're interested in starting your own business and you want to pay me money for my products, then there are three options at the moment. You can either invest 22 euros in my ebook if you're only interested in starting your own business and unsure if starting your own business is for you. Uh, in case that you are committed to having uh, your business like Oliveira is, then you should invest in online course 220 euros and invest your money, time and energy into that course. Ask me questions and let's get shit done. And if you already have a business and you only want more money and more marketing and sales, then send me an email because I do every day one consultation on that topic and we can talk more there. So there is something for, for everyone. It's literally if you have zero dollars and only you trade your time, we have something for you. And if you want to pay me, I'm, of course, able to help. Yes, and I would highly recommend any of these services, definitely. Um, I, I do actually recommend you, I think, at least once on a daily basis. Um, we just have a few minutes left, so I want to ask you some questions that I got to my email. Um, mm -hmm. There were actually uh, several, but I would like to start with a question from one of my students. She is actually an entrepreneur for the last 20 years, and she told me that she's working with... a uh, her employees and also she has you know colleagues other colleagues who are entrepreneurs and at this point when everybody is in a crisis what do you think would be maybe a better option do we help our uh, employees do we give them more money or do we give them bonuses or let them go home or something or do we help our colleagues other entrepreneurs who are also struggling what if we can only pick one what would you recommend? Oh, we, we always have a choice. We can never just, it's never this or that. It's always, that's also true. We can always make a choice. I mean, priority for me were always my employees. Um, I know that I have a responsibility to people I pay money and they, their families and their children depend on me. And I have this responsibility and they are my top priority. So even if that means that I will take from my own money, if that means that I'm going to suck it up and maybe not order food, but actually cook or some, whatever it is in somebody's life that is a cost. You cut the cost and you help your people because those people are helping you. I would not be here if I did not have help. And on the other hand, if you have to fire your employees, which is also legit shit in business that happens, you see then how can you help them find another job? How can you help them find another company? How can you help them fix their resume and their motivation letter and apply on Muse jobs, LinkedIn jobs, and things like that? So uh, also, I think it's important we support each other. We support our colleagues and even people that, you know, you're not even your colleagues that are people that are doing arts and crafts. Every month, I spend 20% of my income to supporting local arts and crafts because I love art. Somebody else supports by doing something else. I'm very passionate about art. I, you know, Olivera, in my home, I have only things that are from Serbia, made in Serbia, from women who were on my workshops because this is not some shit that I say. This is my value. As I said, my business is built on my values. I live them. I don't put them on my website or in my brochure. So whatever floats your boat, help people by doing that. Help people by being yourself. That is why I'm here doing this video, doing this audio interview. This is why I'm not, I don't know, in the hospital helping because I don't know how to do that. I know how to help people with business and that is my contribution. And if I make mistakes, if people don't like what I say, it's okay. I would rather you think I'm shitty than you thinking I'm not showing up because I owe it to myself to show up and contribute as much as I can in a way that I can. Absolutely. That's the idea behind this um, webinar as well and the others that are going to uh, be scheduled after this one. Um, and we are going to have to end this webinar. Um, call it today. <laughs> yes, we're going to have to call it today. That is an idiom for you for today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so once again, I want to thank you, Jovana. This has been so amazing, uh, so inspirational. I feel like I should sit down and write all, all of my ideas right after the this podcast again like every time i talk to you and send me an email to <laughs> and send you an email yes 
<laughs> exactly. Um, so thank you. Uh, I am sure that people who have uh, been here and who will listen to this later uh, are going to benefit from everything that you said. And once again, I want to recommend uh, Yovana as the go-to person for anything business related, uh, especially if you want to learn in Serbian, but also if you want to learn in English, obviously, as you can see, she's freaking amazing. Uh, so thank you. Uh, everybody have a great evening. Stay home, stay safe, and I will see you at the next webinar. And thank you once again. See you. Thank you guys. And, bye. Uh, bye. Have a good night. Stay safe, stay healthy. We're going to do this. Yes. Yes, we are. Bye. We got this. <laughs>